Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Last season we discussed the works of mercy, and this time I thought we'd go over the topic of God's goodness, first by studying goodness in general, and then by looking at the goodness of God specifically. Today, is goodness any different from existence? We've touched on the difference between goodness and badness in episode 214, but to sum up, a good thing is, in and of itself, desirable for some reason. It has a nature which is not, in itself, evil. If we look at the sorts of things that people desire, there is a common trend. Everyone wants the objects of their desires to perfectly conform to their wishes. In short, they want something which is a perfect fit for themselves. This is universal. Nobody wants anything that isn't quite what they're after. So people want perfections of various types. Now, one of the rare things that you can say about existing is that it's perfect. Not that all of existence is perfect, but rather that it is perfect to exist rather than to not exist. If you don't exist, after all, there is no perfection and no possibility of it. It's only if you do exist that perfection is possible. More importantly, however, nobody is only partially existing or imperfectly real. You're either real or you're not. If you are real, then you are perfectly real. This is a form of perfection, and therefore it is desirable for its own sake. Therefore, existence itself is goodness, due to being desirable for its own sake. However, there are, of course, objections that have been raised against this claim. For one thing, people see many things that exist in the world which aren't necessarily good. It's one thing for a thing to exist, and another thing for it to be good, right? Well, in terms of how we see things, sure. Just because an apple exists, it doesn't mean that the apple is perfect. However, the existence of the apple would still be perfect, even if the apple itself had flaws that kept it from being perfect. Those flaws are not a part of the existence of the apple. Not all apples need to have those flaws. It's just an incidental property, like the kind we discussed in episode 264. So a thing can have flawed properties, like bruises and brown spots, and still have a quality of existence itself, which is perfectly good. Probably the stronger objection, though, is that a thing can be more or less good, but can't be more or less existent. However, again, in this case, we're not speaking of whether the existence of a thing is more or less good, only of whether the thing itself has more or fewer perfections than merely existing. For example, if a person is supposed to be virtuous and gentle, and instead they act cruel and selfish, virtue and gentleness are other kinds of perfections which, if they existed perfectly in the person, would increase his or her goodness. If they lack these qualities, it's because those perfections do not exist within them. So I think it's pretty safe to say that on balance, it's reasonable to suppose that true goodness is perfection, and perfection is existence. Therefore, goodness is only different from existence in terms of how we usually think of them. Next time, is every being good? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.